Hello everybody and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host Scott Ramph and I'm here to tell you about all the wonderful things that are happening today here in and around the city of Missoula for your weekend of we Halloween weekend, I guess. But anyways, let's talk about some things that are happening in terms of the weather. Um, I have a bunch of other things I'm going to be talk talking about today. I got some news items. Uh, I got a lot of flagship related news as well as uh, some after school type activities, including um, our very last season closer of high school sports that we broadcast on our Facebook Live channel as well as our YouTube channel in the next couple days. So I'll talk about a little about that and more later on in the show. So, oh yeah, I'm pre-critic. So anyways, let's talk about uh, the weather. So it is currently 27 degrees outside. Um, you can expect uh, to uh, scrape off some of that ice formulating on your, I guess, frost if you want to be more technical about it, um, accumulating on your windshield. Your highs are going to be 55 degrees today. Um, your lows are going to be 23. It's going to be a clear weekend. Um, your Saturday is going to be nice and warm, 65. So, uh, hey, it looks like uh, it might be your last uh, chance to get out and about on a Saturday night, especially uh, since it's going to start getting colder and colder with lows into the 20s and then basically starting to uh, teeter down as the weeks go on. So Monday, your high is going to be 47. So you can expect those lows to keep on continuing. And you might be seeing some of that, those same breezy uh, breezes uh, that happened on Thursday happening um, next week as well as Sunday. So let's talk about some things that are happening in the news. I'm going to kick things off with a little thing that's uh, happening here in the state. Um, uh, you guys hear about this? You guys, you guys hear about this thing that's happening here? Apparently a couple from Haver is going to be running on opposite ends of the uh, political spectrum. One is running as a Democrat and one is running as a Republican. In Haver, the couple are running on opposite sides of the Senate. Um, uh, to take John Tester's seat in 2018. On one side, Sarah Dean, a Democrat, uh, hopes to take the primary election away from Tester this summer, wi while husband, William, Jane, William James Dean, hopes to take on whoever, whoever makes it through the primaries in the 2018 election. So uh, he's running as the Republican. So what seems to be straight out of a sitcom has gathered public attention. The Billings Gazette met with the couple in a Haver Mall and interviewed them. And like a moth to flames, the Associated Press jumped on it and it's been getting national uh, attention for sure. So basically, um, <laughs> I want to do a sitcom voice for you guys. <laughs> These two have been married for many years, but what they don't know is that one of them is a Republican. <laughs> but wait, that's not... Only the th that's not uh, that's not all. The other is a Democrat. <laughs> Watch as these two fight tooth and nail, both at home and in the senatorial race in Montana. Jackass and the Elephant coming to NBC this spring, part of the new Thursday night lineup. Oh, jeez, I can't wait. I can't wait. It's. This is ridiculous. And speaking of waiting, uh, people who have been obsessed with the uh, JFK uh, files uh, pertaining to JFK's assassination in the 60s are finally going to get some more documents. And they just released 2,800 um, pages of documents, which uh, talked about a lot of things that happened. Um, so f first of all, here's the files are among the last to be released by the National Archives under the 1992 law that ordered the government to make public all remain documents pertaining to the assassination. There has been a long of trove of conspiracy theories surrounding Kennedy's death. Yes. Um, in Dallas, November 22nd, 1963, including doubts about whether assassination uh, assassin Lee Harvey R. Uh, Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone as the Warren Commission determined in its report the following year. Remember that Oliver Stone movie where they got uh, people even more crazy when it came to finding out the truth? Wait, I don't think I used air quotes correctly. Uh, the Washington Post reported that the National Security Council officially, uh, officials say government agencies were urging Trump to block some of the files from being released. Um, so the whole, uh, so the whole idea behind um, what's going on here is that if you haven't heard certain th things about it, it was uh, basically once the president was assassinated, police were basically on a manhunt and they took I little bits of information that they could find to basically find the killer. So it eventually got to the point where they were able to find Lee, Har Lee Harvey Oswald, where he finally admitted to doing it. And then, of course, they went through the trial and stuff, and then he was shot dead, and then which brought on some more conspiracies going on here as well, because the person who shot and killed him 
also uh, uh, basically soon after died uh, f from cancer in prison, almost like right after. So there was not much information uh, to go in there. So it's pretty easy to get a conspiracy thi uh, to, to get s conspiracy. But of course, the rest are of the article on NPR talked about Infowars and Donald Trump. So I'll just stop it right there. Um, so the full ar article you can watch it on, you can look for it on NPR.org, but also uh, Washington Post as well uh, post a lot of this um, information as well. And from what a lot of people said in the 20 hundred uh, page document it's very convoluted a lot of informational tidbits um, so it's going to take a little while f for people to find anything juicy as what people are definitely looking for so um, moving on let's move on to this camera so um, on Wednesday, October 25th, the flagship program participated in the annual Lights On After School. Um, it's a nationwide celebration of after school programs. Flagships will be one of, the, of more than 8,000 sites across the nation sending a message that after school is key to children's success um, and that we must keep all the lights on and doors open after school. So here is a nice little video that I made um, what happened on Wednesday at Lowell Elementary. People came to our gym and someone from Thailand, someone from Vietnam, and the mayor. It's pretty good answer, isn't it? And they were all super nice, even though we were kind of disrespectful. Florida? Florida? Okay, we have a, quite a lot of good guests. It's not like my face, it's like a lot of, it's like a lot of country. Okay, I will show you. Uh, I'm from Vietnam. They didn't really mind that at all, so I guess that's good. It was a really good learning experience. Uh, we learned about culture. Uh, we learned a cool new dance. And then you will be follow me, okay? Follow me. We learned that uh, there are multiple uh, parts in Asia, there are, and there are different countries around the world, multiple. Sometimes people come a long way just for little things like this. I mean, we're probably not even their first priority, and they still came. Vietnam was is shaped like an S. My little sister got a magnet like this, except it had a girl, and it said, uh, and it had the shape and this uh, this is a, a picture of a magnet with two little kids wearing their cultural outfits. Did I hear that you guys like flagship? Yeah. yeah that's fantastic. And you know what Life Song After School is about? It's about flagship but it's also about making sure so that you all have a safe, fun place to be after school. The importance is um, learning new things, trying things out, even if you're not experienced in them. Um, I think I, I met some new kids that I wouldn't even consider talking to. It's important that we learn new stuff in a fun, active way, and Flagship just gives us the chance to do that. Flagship, like the group I'm in is Film Club, and uh, the person who's filming this right now is actually one of my film club teachers. Flagships are cool because they do stuff like that. I mean, flagship for me, I know it helped me forge your friendship. And um, some of the participants who were at the uh, um, Lights On After School, apart from the assembly students, were also asked to write po postcards to the con um, congressional representatives to give support for after school programs. Mayor John Engen, Senator Daines and Tester, Governor Steve Bulk, and of course, President Donald Trump were sent postcards, which were designed by a lot of the kids from the flagship program. Um, up next, we have some new programs that are sure to get you going this weekend. And when we come back, we'll have pre-critic and more. So stay with us. We got a whole bunch of um, awesome new programs from the um, the uh, annual Peace Festival that happens here in Missoula at the Thousand New Gardens, the Thousand Buddha New Gardens. Um, sorry, I'm just thinking off the top of my head. Uh, but also we got some city band and of course another uh, Norman McLean. Um, I think it's part three of the Norman McLean Festival. Um, there's four parts to it, so it's going to be wrapping up pr pretty soon. But it's about eight plus hours of people talking about Norman McLean and how. Uh, Missoula's become their home, and especially for River Rents through it. So all that and more 
uh, on MCAT this weekend. Well, I know a girl on a cotton bar farm, pretty as can be. Pretty little thing on a cotton bar farm, no pretty could she be. I do believe, I do believe, she was the girl for me. Well, I do believe she was the girl for me. So she moved down to Rahoon Park, got a job in town. She moved down to Rotten Park, the more she came all around. She and I saw eye to eye, even now I don't know why. Guess that she was just a girl for me. Well, I know a girl on a Kalamar farm, pretty as can be. Pretty little thing on a Kalamar farm, no prettier could she be. I do believe, I do believe she was a girl. The the destination, the destination. Thank you. So our government has a saying that we are thirsty for water but hungry for power as well. So we can't really dedicate so much power. So now the question is, uh, what are the different challenges that we are facing? So we have an increasing demand in urbanization because Singapore is very, it's a developed country with a lot of needs and uh, also climate change. Because we rely on other countries for our water supply, uh, and the other countries are being affected by climate change. For example, the reservoirs are, are drying up and also increasing energy costs. And there's a huge problem of complacency among the Singaporean population, which is very um, common among developed countries, where you open the tap and then you get a clean supply of water. So you don't think much about the hardships other countries go through to get their water. So when you have this kind of complacency, it just, used to, it just leads to a lot of wasteful habits without even realizing it. Well, thanks, Anak, and, and Jenny, and Sarah, and all you who who put this festival together. It's such an impressive um, organization, and it celebrates such a great thing that all the people have worked together to, to honor and preserve the Blackfoot River and Norman McLean. Um, I was thinking that, that uh, my, the piece I have in Headwaters um, is anthology is so short that I was offering last night to give Anik back like four of my 10 minutes, but she wouldn't take them. <laughs> And then, and, then I, and then I realized, well, by giving her my biography, I gave her my other eight minutes. So, <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to repeat what she already said. But uh, for, actually, so first what I'm going to do is I'm going to read uh, the, the very short piece from the anthology and then just um, talk a little bit about the confluence of events that ties my own life to the, to the Blackfoot River and, and a river runs through it. All right, so those are some of the new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. If you're interested in finding out more information, go to MCAT.org. It's a wonderful website, and it is a great resource for anybody to uh, submit programs and also request MCAT to go and film the programs like the programs you just saw here. You can also call us at 542-6228. Another great website to go to is uh, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice we made you write it out twice. And that is uh, some little bit of social media thing happening here as well. So let's talk about some things that are happening for your uh, movie franchise this weekend, it is Halloween, and um, most people want to go see a scary movie, but I'm not sure if you want to go see another Saw movie. So yet another reason not to go to therapy um, comes Jigsaw. It's like Rocky when it decided to become Rocky Balboa. Expect all your fears 
of sticking your hand into things and then s- that seems sketchy come true as you watch torture porn for the uh, for the fifth plus time. I don't know. I, 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 I've kind of I never even I barely saw the first movie. Uh, but people really like this kind of stuff because if they didn't, they uh, wouldn't be making these movies and people wouldn't be making money for these movies. But I guess they make enough money from these movies that they can make more of these movies. That's, that's usually how it works. So if the, if the movie makes more money because uh, – then it make I guess that if the movie makes more money than it – uh, does to create blah 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 then it creates forever and it's a like a forever l- loop of just uh, garbage anyways the next movie um, you like Matt Damon right wrong nobody likes Matt Damon uh, watch this movie about a dislikable guy whose family is put in the crosshairs of the mob in the nuclear family time period comedy drama written by the Coen brothers but directed by George Clooney um, that's a big butt right there uh, watch Rosemary's nephew direct this um Sure to be a man who stare at goats kind of movie with quirks and dislikable characters. Can we get a film with someone you lo- like rather than start off with someone you hate but have to put up with because life doesn't give them a break? Uh, that uh, surprisingly rhymes, and that's like a haiku. So think about it um, when you're not watching this movie. Um, speaking of another movie uh, that you probably uh, have to see but you don't want to see is uh, Thank You for Your Service. Um, there's always seems to be a pro-military movie every year, but this year seems to be pretty big on uh, those heavy-handedness when it comes to the military. Watch Miles Teller, who is a military guy who comes back from war and deals with PTSD, uh, something that's basically uh, what Hollywood thinks that the uh, people in the military service always have when there's problems. So um, they uh, basically highlight it some more in a movie about uh, people who serve in the military. So basically... Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it's it's weird. So it's a good military movie that depicts a guy who is perfectly fine. Um, so uh, uh, okay, um, Hollywood says it doesn't seem to care about those who thrive in military service, um, but they want drama in it. So they want to find like, oh, PTSD is the newest craze. Let's uh, let's exploit that Hollywood. But of course, um, I think if they want to make a really good military esque movie, let's talk about sexual assaults that happen in the military, which apparently people have kind of glossed over in the last couple of times. But that's just me. Let's move on <laughs> to uh, um, that pretty much concludes pre-critic of some of the movies that are happening this weekend that you have to put up with. Uh, of course, I do look forward to next weekend uh, because Thor Ragnarok is coming out. And you can expect that movie to be uh, a picturesque formula for the Marvel franchise. But we have a movie for you guys. It is from Flagship. Um, starring basically some of the kids that you just saw in that uh, Lights On After School program package that I made for you guys. So without further ado, here's the flagship Friday video of the week. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about some uh, things that happen within the city of Missoula and the water company. All right, so what I'm, I'm noticing is you've been having trouble um, balancing your home life with your school life. Um, are you sure it's seriously like that? You know what? I don't have time for this. I'm gonna go. I Wait, have five no. other appointments. Wait, no! Oh, I see my ball tricks! Get back here! Well, now that he's gone, I guess I could just walk out, but I want to make it fun. So maybe I should just try to roll out of the room. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay, this is awkward. Ah!
Not real, but okay, sure. Hey guys, welcome back. Now we're talking about some public works happening within the city of Missoula. So let's kick things off. Um, the public works is looking to save uh, the city money on any water utility improvements and planning via the former Mountain Water Company. Here's John Wilson. He is the director of public works and he's very confident on um, basically saving the city of Missoula money on water updates and basically fixing the water pipes hard to get this down to uh, $400,000 and part of that was was utilizing local staff uh, there were a few other things that would have involved considerable hours with folks from the west coast that get paid a lot more per hour uh, a lot of travel so I think we've come up with a, a, a pretty good bang for the buck with this approach thanks Brian I'll go ahead and make the recommended motion and may I speak to it briefly. Okay, sorry about that. That was just kind of like a gloss over that there, um, he's just very confident. But of course, you will know the scope of the work includes professional support for management, engineering, and operational functions. This goes back to the, their early negotiations when this, uh, the need for this type of services through the early months of ownership was unclear. Now, although the transition to city operation has been a thorough success, they've uh, chosen to retain the tasks and the scope of the work, but with no specific dollar amount in the uh, projected budget. In reality, they don't expect to need certain services um, that would require outside sources, which requires uh, travel costs and hotel costs and all that stuff for some of the employees that they would bring down here to update and do treatments to some of the water uh, cheap, uh, the water uh, company as well. Uh, but they will uh, be available if necessary upon written direction from the city. So, and basically, and will be billed on the basis of actual time and materials. So, um, Transparency is a beautiful thing, but here is John Wilson. Um, he's talking, frankly, about uh, things to be done. Uh, HDR in their initial proposals had had quite a few workshops, uh, public workshops, committees, and and we just didn't think that was the best use of money. That wasn't to avoid having people involved, but. Uh, you know, I approach it from a little bit more technical standpoint. It seems like the, the question of should we be doing this and all of that is, is well settled. Uh, but if, if any counselors would like to, uh, you know, attend, like for example, we will early on, we'll be having what we're still calling a workshop, but it will be more at a, at a staff level. And I think it would be totally appropriate to have a few counselors involved uh, uh, to be looking at uh, defining the scoping somewhat more, uh, to be looking at um, – I'm sorry, I wish I'd brought the agreement with me. But there'll be, uh, you know, two things we've talked about there for the initial basis of planning and scoping that uh, would be perfect. And at that time, we could talk about what the, what the future steps are and the best places for you or others to, to join us. Okay. Uh, I have no uh, concern about that. Just don't have a real clear thought for you now exactly where, you know, that would fit in. But there'll definitely be opportunities. Okay. All right. So, uh Part of the city's ownership is that the uh, city of Missoula uh, appoints uh, people to kind of uh, give updates and reports. Uh, usually Public Works is the one that deals with any utilities, which include uh, um, the water treatment plants. Um, Echo Compost is one of those things that falls under the category uh, under the umbrella of the Public Works as well, since it was purchased just recently by, by the uh, basically adjacent to the um, water treatment plant as well uh, but of course as the city uh, begins running the company things to be moving very smoothly for it and there's uh, coming up with uh, very uh, uh, great uh, cost saving opportunities and also basically keeping the experts inside Missoula um, so anyways uh, but of course they always kind of keep the uh, experts on a retainer in case they need to do it for a long distance but um, it seems like uh, everything's moving smoothly and they're moving forward but of course you can watch the whole meeting about the whole brass tax of what they were talking about um, during ci.missoula.mt.us all you got to go all you got to do is you go to your government you go to agenda webcast minutes under the city council 
and he brings you to a wonderful page um, that basically gives you all the outlines that you need to know about upcoming meetings. Yeah, so uh, but if you can get better, I'll get you a closer look just for you guys. And then here is the list of some of the meetings. Basically, um, the links are right here. These are the agendas. And if you see MP3 or MP4, that gives you a uh, audio or a audio and visual representation of these meetings that occurred on these particular days. Um, but of course, these are the upcoming meetings happening on November 1st, which will be Committee of the Whole, Admin and Finance, more Committee of the Whole, and all sorts of stuff happening next week as well. But of course, there is no City Council meeting next Monday, as it is the fifth Monday of the month. And usually, uh, City Council does not meet on the fifth Monday of the month. So that about does it for your City Council report. I got a couple, uh, let's see, what is on my list of things to do for this morning show. But... Let's talk about some things that are happening inside the city of Missoula in terms of events. So let's talk about starting your Friday morning off right at 10 a.m. Missoula Indoor Sports Arena and Roots Acker Sports Center around 11, between 10 and about noon today. You get to do out indoor bounce pits and foam pits, seven to $12, uh, depending upon how many kids you bring down. And it is a good opportunity to kids to get active um, and safe environments with foam pits and padded uh, rooms and all sorts of things happening around these places as well. They also have things that bitter in your gymnastics, but sometimes, but most of the times they don't really post it too often on MissoulaEvents.net, e e uh, except for certain like Tuesdays and Thursdays. So just be aware of that. Um, you can always call them at any time whatsoever to find out. But of course, if you're interested in more of the story time and tiny tales type of stuff, Missoula Public Library hosts tiny tales and story time for kids who are, are basically learning to read and want to get engaged with books. And that happens at the Missoula Public Library pretty much every single day at 10.30 a.m., either in the kids' area on the Dragon Rug or in the big conference room in the um, down on the first floor of the Missoula Public Library. Um, Science Friday at Families for Children's Museum start at 11 a.m. Um, and also you have some more... Uh, Chance for Science at Spectrum Discovery Center, and they're doing a motion picture. Um, if you're interested in card games and uh, cribbage, um, which is a card game with a board. So um, it is cribbage and bridge at Senior Center starting at 1230-ish. Um, one of them starts at 1245, but I just might as well just go to 1230. Um, also, there's a... Uh, Makerspace and Teen Writers group happening inside the Missoula Public Library. So uh, Makerspace starts at 1 p.m. So if you want to make 3D printed stuff and other cool little things that are happening there. Um, if you know Makerspace, great. Um, but they, they have a 3D printer there and they have a lot of cool electronics there that help you uh, create and make 3D objects. Uh, but also there's a teen writers group for any teenagers who are struggling with their writing skills and wish to improve it along the way as well as they have chocolate there for some of the kids. And this is after school around 3 o'clock. Um, Predator feeding at the Missoula Insectarium at 4 p.m. They'll be feeding a cricket to one of the hungry predators at 4 p.m. every Friday. Join them as they demonstrate how they capture and consume their prey. Come see who is hungry today. Um, Roots Acro Sports Center Halloween performance. Um, Roots Acro Sports Center is hosting a uh, acro team to put on a delightful spooky show with Roots Acro Sports Center. They're doing two shows, one at 5.30 and one at 7.30 p.m. It's $8 uh, for a child and adult. Um, family rates are $32 for family of five or more. So family rates include parents and siblings only. Um, family Friendly Friday at the Top Hat Lounge is from 6 to 9 p.m. at the Top Hat Lounge before they kick off some of the nightly Halloween um, party uh, events that are happening this weekend because um, usually it's the weekend before or the weekend during Halloween. So All Hallows Eve Psychic Wine Night at Water Lily starting at 6 p.m. And you join for psychic greetings and just hang out with a bunch of witches. Um, <laughs> and you, it's fifty dollars a seat, so um, it, it can be expensive. But they have wine, and you hang out and do witchcraft or whatever. I don't know. I I, I kind of glossed over this. Uh, <laughs> moving on. Uh, Love and Gravity Mask Studio is doing uh, a acrobatic conundrum. Is being ha hailed by critics as one of the most important artistic voices in the modern uh, circus uprising. Wow. Um, writers of their own press release. Uh, for the very first time, they're bringing their hit show. Love and Gravity to Montana. Love and Gravity presents six artists on the minimal stage with little else but their talents and hearts. The performance explores through a tapestry-like journey the endless waves of which we uh, find love, support, and a partnership. So this event is happening. Um, it's a two-hour run with intermission, and it starts at 6.30 p.m. in the Mask Theater tonight. 
Um, John and Hank Green. So if you know them from the SciShow and other uh, science-related shows on YouTube, they're uh, famous YouTubers. Uh, they're from Missoula. They do their show from here, and they're doing a Turtles All the Way Down. So they're at the University of Montana. They are hanging out. Um, joined number uh, one best-selling author John Green, and special who wrote uh, The Fault in Our Stars and all that stuff. And, of course, Hank Green on tour in support of John's new novel, Turtles All the Way Down. In this multimedia event, the brothers will uh, talk about John's latest book, answer audience questions, perform live music, and more. All tickets include an autographed copy of Turtles All the Way Down. And this event is happening Friday, October 27th uh, at 7 p.m. in the Yuri Lecture Hall. So it's underground the Yuri Lecture Hall. So you can check that out. It's going to be uh, pretty interesting. Um, Missoula Haunted House and um, kicks off their kids' hours this weekend from 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, for the little scaredy kids. Um, but, of course, Missoula Haunted House is happening um, tonight, and it will be going on until uh, the last night, which is um, Halloween night, which is the 31st on Tuesday. Um, Free Cycles Halloween Extravaganza is happening at Free Cycles starting at 7 p.m. All ages uh, Halloween fun at Free Cycles. Um, ha costume contests, photo booths, refreshments, and prizes for the best costume, including a bicycle, music by the Scurfs and Lockstock Cartel. Ooh, I love Lockstock Cartel. Donations are appreciated. It's usually about $5, and you're pretty much solid. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's 7 p.m. the free cycles. Um, they usually go until about 10 p.m. It's neighborhood, so you got to be quiet, so be respectful for your neighbors. Um, King Tut and his fabulous tomb, history, mystery, and controversy. Um, at the Roxy, 95 years after discovery in 1922, the tomb of the youngest pharaoh, uh, King Tut, I'm not going to say his whole name, sorry, is still considered by many the greatest uh, ar archaeological discoveries of all time. And this is lectured by Donald P. Ryan, Ph.D., will present the story of Tomb's discovery along with the little-known facts and also address some uh, provocative questions yet to be answered. And it's free and open to the public. And also happening this weekend, Mamma Mia continues its run this weekend. Um, it just premiered on Thursday for everybody, but this weekend they're going to be doing matinee shows at 2 p.m. And, of course, nightly shows at 7.30. Um, they'll have an earlier matinee, uh, earlier nightly show on Sundays. But if you want to look that up, you go to MCT Inc. Dot org. Um, Rocky Horror Live um, in Missoula, the Rocky Horror Picture Show inspired uh, some local artists and actors and performers to uh, basically the, do the Rocky Horror Picture Show live on stage at the Wilma, and they've been doing it for a long time now. So this is happening um, basically w for one weekend only, and the shows are at 8 p.m. and 11.45 p.m. tonight, and I believe it'll be also on Saturday night as well. But uh, let's um, show you guys the last time I'm going to show you an art clip from the uh, George and Phil uh, show cl at the Clay Studio. So this is your last chance to go out to the Clay Studio today because it will be wrapping up today, and they'll be doing some new art installation. So this is the last time I'll be showing this art clip featuring the Clay Studio. Hey guys, welcome back. I want to thank Rick Phillips for um, producing those art clips. Um, 
I'm out of art clips after just now, so there, I have no uh, brand new art clips to show any of you guys uh, from now on. Um, that's basically it. Um, for at least a little while, I'm pretty sure I'll get an art clip pretty much as soon as next week, so hey, you guys aren't off the hook quite yet. So uh, Saturday, let's talk about it is the last... It's the last weekend for Farmer's Market, People's Market, r r r the Troll Market by the uh, Higgins Bridge, blah, 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 all that stuff, which goes on from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., um, happening at the uh, in the downtown Missoula area. You can't miss it. It's the, basically the last weekend. Um, I, I, I Last week, I, suge I suggested you shouldn't go to that one because I was at the one um, about two weeks ago, and it's kind of like fizzled out, and not, there's not much... Um, around but if you a few if you hey if you want to go you should go and it's going to happen um but of course some of the um um for some of the people who are kind of crazy when it comes to the farmer's market or anything like that winter market is starting up and will be continuing on through the elks lodge from what i uh, believe and what has been done in the past um and that's usually going to be fit in between the times of 8 a.m and 1 p.m so um community blood drive at the missoula fresh market starting at 10 a.m and going until about 2 p.m missoula fresh market is, is hosting the blood bus so hang out um donate your blood and um yeah it's gonna be great that's basically it. You know, it's it's a you know blood drive. You know, donate blood. People need blood to live. Um, uh, patchwork moments with Lynn Sanders, a living art of Montana. Lynn Sanders is hosting a workshop um, who offers free to adults living with um, eighteen, uh, 18 uh, with eighteen years or older, dealing with illness or loss. No experience necessary. For questions, please call them at five four nine five three two nine. Living art is a place to create, share, and heal. Kids pumpkin carving at Cabela's at eleven a.m. Bring your kids to Cabela's and they'll have some fun outlines to carve a uh, pumpkin jack-o-lantern and of course must be 14 years or younger um and yeah 14 years and younger sorry but i don't know why i said or younger it's like oh yeah you have to be 14 years or younger oh it's like oh can i be both it's like no okay so pumpkins and child safe tools are provided and there's only 25 pumpkins available but you're encouraged to bring your own darn pumpkin anyways um and they'll help you carve it along the way to make a beautiful pumpkin sculpture um i made one probably about uh two weekends ago and within two days it already had mold so my pumpkin's gone sad uh, <laughs> uh, of course there's a Halloween party at the Missoula Insectarium starting at 11 a.m. Um, tomorrow morning um, they're celebrating Halloween and then the Insectarium with fun ga and games music treats and more and they'll oh geez sorry about that uh, and they have activities in the classroom and treats for any trick or treaters coming into the party in their costumes this will be Oreo spider cookies um, to make uh, weaving spiders webs with yarn and spider art projects and more. So this will happen in, um, um, and they also have a tarantula feeding schedule at one and at one p.m. and two thirty p.m. and all sorts of things happen. And it's four dollars for uh, for everybody over the ages of three. Um, if you're under three, you're getting free, obviously. Uh, the Capitol Christmas Tree and RMBT is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge. They'll be hosting the Rocky Mountain Mountain Ballet Theater um, for. Uh, uh, celebra celebration performance on Saturday. Every year, a different national forest is selected to provide a tree to appear in the west lawn of the U.S. Capitol uh, for the Christmas tree season. This year, the t uh, a tree from the Kootenai National Forest in Montana has been chosen, and the RMBT has uh, been selected to celebrate the journey through Montana and the D.C. And of course, Rocky Mountain School of Ballet will perform in re uh, the repertoire and will travel to Washington, Washington D.C. The special performance will include the uh, Engelman Spruce uh, Tree Ballet, the Foresters Kickline, and our heroes in honor of our Montana smoke jumpers. So that's what's going to be happening at the Top Hat Lounge. But if you're interested in doing some um, basically media creation and you have your little kids between the ages of 9 and 13 uh, just about, you can come on down to MCAT for only $10. It's four hours from 1 to 5 p.m. Kids get to come down, do some stop animation, get to learn how to make movies, and learn how to edit, add some uh, voices, add some things. We have all the equipment here to make all your imaginative movies come true. So that happens from 1 to 5 p.m. every single Saturday. Coffee with a Cop. 
um, Starbucks Coffee Company is hosting um, a Coffee with a Cop with Missoula's uh, finest police, and they have deals and stuff. And you can d donate to your uh, city police, which goes to a lot of good causes throughout the city of Missoula and beyond. Um, Crafting Castle Creatures is going to happen in the Missoula Public Library. The Youth Service Department presents uh, Crafting Castle Creatures, which occurs in the young adult room, which is on the second floor. Um, using a sculpted clay, participants will create creepy creatures inspired by the new ceramic, ceramic castle at the kids department from 2.30 to about 4.30 p.m. tomorrow at the Missoula Public Library. Disco Bloodbath is happening at Downtown Missoula, which kicks off some of the uh, big events that are happening in the um, Downtown Missoula area. Bl Disco Bloodbath used to be like a, a big party that happened at a central location. The starting point is at Karis Park at 5 p.m. It's going to be basically kind of be like a brew fest for a little while, but then as soon as um, the evening becomes late night uh, happenings, um, it'll spread out throughout it, the entire city of Missoula. So um, that's going to be uh, tickets are available at Rock and Rudy, Storm Cloud, and anywhere you can find event tickets. Um, you can also buy tickets there as well, and it's going to be at um, basically Karis Park. That's where the starting point is. Um, yeah, and they've, yeah, it's it's basically the Halloween party that happens here in Missoula. Um, Haunted Hollow is at a carousel, so if you go a little bit further away from Caris Park and go to a, a carousel for Missoula, um, they're, they are doing their uh, um, annual Not Too Haunted House. It's for the little kids, not just, it's not for kids, it's for little kids. And they're for some of the kids. Um, admission is for customers uh, two years or older, um, two years and, no, is it? Yeah, two years and older. I don't know why I keep on saying or. And they will be open from 6 to 8 p.m. on um, the 21st, 22nd. And, of course, this is your last chance to check out the Haunted Hollow. All other events on MissoulaEvents.net are for anybody interested in finding out more information about what's happening in the city that we live in for this weekend along the way. But let me just kind of go over some of the late-night events that are happening. I'm just going to scroll on down here. Dark Horse is doing um, a, a rock show. Um, JD in the Western Front is going to be country at the Center Ice Saloon. So they're basically right next to a door to each other because they're the same building. Um, <laughs> Much like Charlie is going to be at the Broadway Bar and Grill. Uh, Russ Nasset, Nasset and the Revelators are going to be at Union Club. Officially lit party, after party with the. Uh, it's going to be at the VFW. So the uh, lit party, which is happening at the Adams Center, is happening Friday night. Um, uh, there's. It's going to be a rap and hip hop. Letter B is uh, Red Hot Wonders is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge that night as well. And once again, the uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show will, happening, will be happening Friday night. But let's scroll on down and keep on going. Uh, some more stuff happening um, Saturday night. Here's your late night Saturday night because it is all the Halloween stuff. Um, let's kick things off with some more MCT. Of course, Mamma Mia is still going on at 7.30 p.m. But if you are um, doing some late night events, Halloween Costume Party is going to be at the Lolo Hot Springs. Uh, JD and Western Front is going to be at the Sunrise Saloon, some more country. Um, the Roxy Theater is doing a film that night if you want to go to a movie instead of um, some out. But, of course, most things don't really pick up until 11 if you're that kind of person. Um, Band in Motion Halloween Costume Party is going to be at the Union Club. Halloween Not of This World Costume Party is going to be the Dark Horse. Absolutely with Chris Moon is going to be the Bad Under. Karaoke by Kaleidoscope will be at VFW Old Beck. Seems like this is a pretty uh, standard weekend for the most part because um, Halloween is going to be on a Tuesday this year. So, um, And also, I won't be doing a Halloween episode of Wake Up Missoula since, uh, um, you know, it's such a f so far away from whatever. So, um, and I, I don't know. I There's no way of explaining it. I guess I'm just lazy. Who cares? Blah, blah, blah. Get, get off my back, Mom. Um, so, Wake Up Missoula, if you want to find out more information about our uh, spooky programming, as in it's not spooky, uh, which is not surprising, is uh, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice. We made you write it out twice. MCAT.org for more MCAT related things, but speaking of MCAT related things, MCAT will be uh, filming the uh, football game tonight between, let's see, just, uh, uh, what what was that game? Uh, MCPS, let me just, I don't know, I'm just wasting time here. Um, blah, 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 just bear with me. It's going to be Sentinel High School versus Capital, Helena Capital, it's senior night at MCPS Stadium, and it's going to be the last season game for uh, football, because next week is going to be the uh, Montana playoffs for the state tournament. It will be going on for November 3rd, 
10th and 17th and pretty much will be mostly in uh, located in Billings for the most part but from what I hear is that um, Big Sky Eagles will be uh, um, playing um, on the first uh, playoff week. So uh, hopefully MCAT will be able to do that one. So I'll keep you guys updated on that as well. Um, but f once again, um, we'll be streaming the football game live on Facebook. But if you missed it, you can always rewatch it because once it's on Facebook, it's on there forever. But also we'll put it on YouTube if you can't find it on Facebook. Uh, but you have to like us on Facebook to get any kind of notifications uh, of anything that's happening live on our Facebook page. So once again, um, to find out, to find MCAT, you go to Missoula's Community Media Resource on Facebook to find out any upcoming live streams and more about what's happening. But of course, you can always find MCAT on Twitter at MCAT TV Missoula, but also you can find me on any social media by typing in Wake Up Missoula. So it's as simple as typing Wake Up Missoula and you can find all my social media needs. And I think that's pretty much it that I needed to say. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ram. Thanks for joining me.